she two kids in the sandbox fighting and you're the parent or a kid take or whatever it is and you're like break it up. That's Dale Moore and Rich Paul. This is an absolute embarrassment and continues to be an embarrassment. This is six of the universe. We're never going to be able to escape it. And if you hear from Daryl Moy, we will not escape it until the end of Ben Simmons' contract. Which is the most absolutely asinine statement that I have heard in over 20 years of basketball. And, you know, that Rivers is right about one thing. We've seen things kind of like this. Yeah, obviously not one year into your five-year extension, but... We've seen stuff like this before. And to a degree, you know, player wants out, you know, the team wants to recruit value, etc. This is unprecedented because, you know, I'm on the side of Gilbert Arenas right now. Everyone is acting poorly and immaturely. Ben Simmons to come to camp. He should be earnest. Get himself in a position to play some games. Although I have said it before and I'll say it again. You've had 275 games of Ben Simmons play. There's no GM worth his salt that thinks if, and I mean random if, Ben Simmons goes ham on somebody. That he, He's not that guy. He's not Stephon Marbury, Sebastian Telefair. He's not that dude that's going to put 45. That's not who he is. That's not who he is. That's not ever who he's been. Ben Simmons is not the type of player that's going to come on the floor and you will see his individual value. You know, you're able to put Jerome B last night with Burkhan Courtmars, with Tyrese Maxey, with those guys, and you can get a bow out win over the Pelicans. Could you honestly say the same thing for Ben Simmons? No, you couldn't. That's just not Ben's game. I know Ben Simmons wants to pretend that it could be, but that Liv is offered him that opportunity with the second unit, and Ben is like, nope. So even Ben, deep down inside, knows he's not about that life. I know he's not about that life from five years, 270 games played. So what is Dale Moy honestly thinking if he thinks that Ben Simmons is going to magically show up on the court and all of a sudden... You know, we're going to give you a Hall of Famer and Damian Lillard, or we're going to give you a multiple-time All-Star in Bradley Beal. <laughs> Come on, man. It's, it's time to get real. Ben Simmons is a bust. Rather than what we fought next LeBron, next Magic, etc., he's a bust. He's a mediocre scorer, hovering around 16 in the game. He gets you with eight rebounds, which is actually depressing, Again, to put it in perspective, this guy averaged over 11 rebounds in college. So basically, you're getting like 30 to 35% less rebounding effort. And it's not because he's getting boxed out or something. No, half of the time, you know, we see it in the post. We saw it with our 2.0 breakout. Half of the time, he's just standing there. So with rebounding, it's because he likes to wait for the ball at times. Doesn't really go after it. I mean, look at Andre Drummond, 6'10", 270. They're literally the same height. Andre Drummond weighs a little bit more, obviously. But you see Drummond with a pursuit of the ball. Ben Simmons? Eh. And we've seen when Ben Simmons does want to pursue the ball. 15 rebounds in a playoff game. Yeah, the Wizards were small as hell. But that's the best Ben Simmons can be as a, a true facilitator when he wants to be a role player, a defender. He could be that guy, that guy, not that guy, not the Iverson, Francis, Marbury, oh, let's build around this guy. He's not that dude. He should be not that dude. I I'm going to be this, since Dale Moy is not real with the situation, I'm going to be real with Dale Moy. He's not that dude, even if you wait all four years, of the no one is going to invest that value. They would be ridiculous to do so. It would be absolutely ridiculous of a general manager owner to look at the career 15 and 7 rebound guy and be like, this guy, this is it, this guy can be the face, the cornerstone of our franchise. <laughs> that, like, that's ridiculous, Dell. It was ridiculous before Ben Simmons put on the shit show. 
It was ridiculous before he put the baby bib in his mouth and was a five-year-old. It was ridiculous then. It's absurd now. It's not happening. Even if Dane acts out, or Bill acts out, or Levine acts out, or whoever acts out, you're the Bulls, you're the Wizards, you're the Blazers. Do you want the Bip guy as your franchise? <laughs> like that guy. Like that video. That guy. No. No. So while everyone is praising Dale Moy for sticking up the clutch, I'm here saying, how many millions of dollars are you willing to burn to prove this point? Because you're just as bad as Ben right now. This team cannot afford to have $33 million sitting AWOL because you think that you're going to get I mean, again, just in general, why would I trade a superior player in Bradley Beal, in Daniel Lillard, potential elite, could be Hall of Fame guys if they get certain accolades like winning championships, why would I trade that level of player for Ben Simmons? Give me one good reason. Like, pretend I'm the old Seedale, give me one good reason why I have to trade a Hall of Famer for Ben Simmons. There is none. From the Blazer perspective, there is absolutely zero reason, even if Damian Lillard acts out. Keywords, even if he acts out. The situation doesn't change if Damian Lillard's like, oh, I want out. Even if Damian Lillard's like, oh, I want out and I want Philly. Portland's going to be like, Philly, find the third team. I don't want Ben Simmons. Because I wouldn't. I'm not going to take four years on that $44 million as a big baby. Period. He's shown me that he's not to pay the bill around on the court. He's definitely shown me he's not to pay the bill around off the court. So, Dale, what are you even thinking here? Like, his value it isn't that it sunk. It's where it is. He's a role player who's paid a max who now has a temper tantrum. I wouldn't trade him for a start. I'm sorry. Sure, we would. Of course we would. That's a no-brainer, Dale. No shit you would like to upgrade for absolutely nothing. No shit. But if you're Portland, Washington, Chicago, you're not getting a kid from 2016 out of LSU anymore. You're not getting 20-year-old Ben Simmons. You're getting 25-year-old Ben Simmons. There's no way in hell. Now, I'm going to be adamant on this. There is no way in hell that a team gives Dale Moy his difference maker, period, even for all four years. Write that down. I will put my entire human reputation on the idea that we will not get a superstar for Ben Simmons directly in a trade. Period. He doesn't have that value. He didn't have it before. He definitely doesn't have it now. Which is why I said this is like two kids in a sandbox and you're like, oh, get over it. It's Get over it. No, this should not take four years. It shouldn't even take a year. If you want to bring it to the deadline, fine. But if you're telling me you're going to waste $33 million just to prove a point, then I really, really overestimated you as a general manager. I really overestimated you. Billy King did some stupid shit. Signed Kenny, Kenny Thomas to a seven-year contract. Matt Geiger was signed to a long-term contract. I had seen some stupid shit. But at least you signed him to play basketball. <gasps> this is absolutely insane. It's insane to me. Like, there's nothing good about this. There is nothing that moves you ahead about this. 
You don't win games by wasting $33 million worth of team salary for Ben Simmons to play Call of Fucking Duty. It's absolutely absurd. There's nothing positive about this. Nothing about this that any Sixer fan whose goal is to win a championship. They only made the comment, oh, we're doing what we're doing to put ourselves in the best chance to win a championship. I'm like, being I ain't being be like, how? <laughs> Come on, how? He's sitting at home, he's playing Call of Duty. You don't have the depth that you want on your roster, nor do you have your start. How? How, Dale? How is wasting this money helping the Bobby Sessex a franchise now or in the long term? How? It's not. You only think it will help if you're able to get the star in the end. Which. <laughs> Again, I greatly overestimated you as a general manager. And it's one dude, it's whatever. But if I were an owner of an NBA team and Daryl Moore is on the market, I think differently. As an owner, I need you to maximize, obviously, A, the team profit, but also B, I want you to maximize the team potential on the court. Daryl Moore cannot do either of these things, it looks like. So... Yeah, I really, really overestimated you, Dale. I really overestimated your ability. I overestimated it. And Jothar Harris overestimated it as well. I do not think... Okay, millionaires do not like to waste money. We saw that when Ben Simmons was like, Oh, alright, I'll show up. Multiply that times 100. For Jotha Harris. This is a venture for him. For millionaires and billionaires, if you're going to invest money in a venture, you only invest money up to the point it creates a profit. And yes, the six of as a whole is profitable, but this particular situation is not profitable. This particular situation costs money to Jotha Harris as well. Oh, sure, they're not paying Ben. But again, that player valuation or the team valuation, what if the Sixers don't win at many games? What if the Sixers, while Dale Moy is sticking its grip for the franchise player that isn't, the Sixers continue to struggle with the lack of depth? A lot of people were complaining about point guard. I personally was not, but let's say that that's true. So you're wasting this $33 million. You have a point guard hole, or so you think, but anyway... You know, you were wasting $33 million. The team is no longer a contender just to wait for this invisible superstar. It's ridiculous, Dale. And Jonathan Harris isn't going to be for that before. You. No, that's ridic- that is a bluff. It's a stupid one. There's no way. Ben Simmons throwing away a million dollars. That's one thing. You're telling Jonathan Harris the best way to get your maximum value is if you piss away the remaining four years of Ben Simmons' contract, if I'm just there, I'm looking at him like, see, we wasted over a hundred million dollars in this guy, and you're telling me that in your estimation, the best way I could get that value back is if I piss all four years down the toilet? Fuck that, give me a new general manager. Like, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely insane. And it's the exact opposite of Sam Hinkie. You know, we saw Sam Hinkie, we saw him able to deal a fatty on for a first round pick. When you're able to see Sam Hinkie try to extract value. Now his drafting was shit, but the concept of trading for value is something that Sam Hinkie did very well. Sam Hinkie was able to take a distressed set. And move it. Dale Moy's never been in a distress set market. You know, he acquired a distress set in James Harden. He can acquire distress sets, but he has no idea how to deal with one, obviously. Because this 
It's not healthy and it's not smart. Because when you have a distress to settle in the marketplace, you know, think of it like a house. Okay, so you have a house. It's on the market. It's been on the market for a while. Let's say you price this house at around $300,000. And let's say that it's real market value is actually closer to one hundred seventy. You can keep that $3,000 house on the market for years, Daryl. It is not going to get sold. The market value doesn't exist. I am not overpaying you for a house that I value at $170,000 for $300,000. That's not how it works. I might pay you two ten. dollars I'll pay you $210,000 for the $170,000 property. You'll make a $30,000 profit. I'll pay you that. <laughs> pay three thousand dollars with a hundred. I'm not paying you double on a house. Come on, that's what Elmo is asking here. He's asking for double the value of the player that he has. <laughs> yeah, good luck waiting all four years, Dale. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So when does this end? Because Dale Moy's wording here is obviously bluff publicity trying to show teams that only if you pay what we want. But if he's not worth what you want, these are the teams that are asking how they're going to be. Look at what the Pacers did and we saw Malcolm Bogdan. They're like, okay then. We like Malcolm Bogdan, we'll keep him here. We thought Ben could be something that we bring in, but since the price is that high, we're going to hold on to Bogdan, and we're going to hold on to a player that we like, value, and convert. That's what all these other teams are going to do as well. Either that, or again, you heard from Stephen A. Schmidt, you heard from some of these other, the chat is going a little louder. If Damian Lillard ever does want out, he won New York. Now, if you're the Blazers, again, what what better? Has Philadelphia been a national partner in all this? Or has New York? There is nothing about this that Dale Moore is handling correctly. You don't sell a distressed set at max value. If you want to prop up a max set, normally what you do is you try and upgrade it, you try to fix it, use a housing example, get some new plumbing, get a new AC. Obviously here, it isn't just Ben Simmons if he plays, he's his normal self. Again, his normal self is $170,000. That's not going to change shit. That's just telling me that it's back on the market. Well, I already knew it was on the market. The only way the Sixers get that Dame Beal Lillard is if Ben shows himself to be worthy of that. If he shows himself to be in that three thousand dollar package, and that isn't just by being who he's always been, because I'm gonna be honest with you, if who he always was were enough, then what would have happened is this trade would have long been done. If in fact who he was was the equivalent, then. The Blazers will be like, I don't want to give you six first round picks for CJ McCollum. Can we compile this at like, I don't know, four or three? If Ben Simmons were at that level, Dale Moy would have gotten his offer. When he's offering those things to the Raptors, etc., or when he made the offer to the Warriors, if he were what Dale Moy evaluates him as, the deal would have been done. Period. There's no buyer, especially the, from the Warriors' standpoint. The Warriors were looking to buy in the offseason. They were looking to buy. But obviously, from both the Raptor and from up your standpoint, both of them are either too big of an asking price, and like Jay, Mr. Lakeup said, the whole Ben, Draymond Green fit, was confusing as well. So, if he were that value, this would have been done. He's not that value. 
before the temper tantrum and definitely not after the temper tantrum. So, I was on Discord, a Sixer Discord, and, you know, I've been chatting in the community, and one person brought up one potential end game that honestly is looking really realistic at this point is we're probably going to end up going into arbitration. Ben Simmons doesn't want to play. The Sixers don't want to pay the guy for not playing. There's going to be a CBA issue there. Arbitration is going to rule that Ben will get a percentage of his money. Ben Simmons will sit out. And if teams don't up the value at the trade deadline, then you're going to be waiting for off seasons, et cetera. Again, if they're more sticks to the word. But if you want my personal opinion, if you want my personal opinion, I do believe that this will be done in the offseason. Daryl Moy could pass to all he wants. If I'm Jonathan Harris, I am not looking to lose that money just for Jonathan Harris, uh, I'm sorry, for Daryl Moy to prove a point to clutch. <laughs> that, that's just stupid. And I think even at that point, John B will get impatient as well. It's one thing to say, well, good, we'll take us down. It's another thing when that results in wins and losses. So from a competitive standpoint, Dale Moore is making absolutely no sense. From a management standpoint, he is making absolutely no sense. From a distress of sense standpoint, again, it's making absolutely no sense. All Dale Moore is doing is the GM buzz and a rich Paul. Like I said, two kids in a sandbox. And it's just, it would be laughable if I were not a fan of the Sixers. If I'm a Utah Jazz fan, if I were a Phoenix Sun fan, I'd just be like, <laughs> oh, look at these kids in the sandbox. Oh, this is so cute. But no, I'm a Sixer fan, so it's a huge mess. It's an embarrassment for management. It's just, you know, I honestly wish that, I wish we didn't reach out to Dale. Knowing what I know now, I just wish that Elton Bam was the one the head honcho here, because we all know that L didn't want to make a deal by now. I mean, that's where I'm at. I even posted a video, so you can think of this as a second video, by Adele Moy. If he can't put this team in a position to win a championship, and regardless of what he says, his little GM version of a temper tantrum is not putting the Sixers anywhere closer to a championship, so... I'm sorry, and I don't care if I'm the only minority view on this. This is a waste of time, a waste of money, a waste of organization. It's how bad teams operate. And as I recall, we're a championship contender. So, hopefully it gets resolved, but Daryl Moore no longer gets his rep for me. He only made one good train in his career. That's getting James Harden from Oklahoma City to Houston. Other than that, if you look extensively at his track record, and if you look at what he's done now, what have you done for me? I haven't done much, but you have caused a lot of a mess. And you're the only one who's going to be able to clean it. Or Jocelyn Harris will later tell you to clean it when the wins and losses pile up differently. And when the money doesn't flow into the organization, then you'll really start to see the nerves and the gears turn. Which is just awful. I know a lot of fans are excited about Darren Moore's press conference. His conference made it worse. Because it confirms that the six of management is insane. And not in a good way. Six of the universe shining off.